Hey, what's up everybody? I hope everyone's having a wonderful day. I hope you're choosing God in all directions and remembering his word, remembering all the things he's done for you, thanking him for his mercy, because without it, we are nothing. Without his love and his creation, we are nothing. And every day we should thank him. I've been busy these past couple days and I'm sorry I didn't make videos, but I need to start pushing them in. Because sometimes I do have time, I just don't do them because I won't rest. But I should be doing anything for God. I should be giving my 100%. And I tell you what, even though I might read the Bible a lot and do this, I think God has actually called me not to read the Bible so much, but He's actually called me to share the gospel. Because I can tell you what, listen to this. And some Christians get this mixed up. And I want to talk about this because some of you might disagree with me. And I don't care. Because Jesus taught this. You had the priest. They read the Bible all the time. They read the Bible and they did everything in their power to just look upon it and read it and try to understand it, right? Well, guess what they didn't do? They didn't, they didn't share the gospel of God. All they did is sat in their big temple and worry about themselves and never worry about any anything else well i tell you what jesus christ came down to die on the cross for our sins to take the pain for us and you know what he did he didn't read the bible that much but he preached the truth so that's what i'm going to start doing on this channel more that's what i'm going to start doing as a christian more is not focusing on reading the bible so much but making sure every soul that i walk around goes to heaven this is what it's all about people we don't want people falling to eternal death now I'm not saying to read the Bible read the Bible daily stay in the Bible because without the Bible you will start losing losing knowledge and without the Bible you won't even be able to preach truth but I'm telling you preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ and making sure that you're winning souls to Christ is more important than reading the Bible eight hours a day I promise you it is, because Jesus Christ showed it to us. You look at the priests, they read the Bible all the time, but they were hypocrites. While those that spread the gospel were true, humble servants. And you can see it in Jesus. I'm telling you what, the Holy Spirit will guide you. The Holy Spirit will give you the words to speak. The Holy Spirit will be your comforter and your reminder in all directions. You don't need to read the Bible 10,000 times in order to preach good. The Holy Spirit will give you the power. God will give you the power. Don't let anyone tell you that you have to read this, the Bible this much. Because the Bible is knowledge. But the question is, where is the heart at? Is your heart trusting in God? Are you having faith in God? I hope so, because that's what we're going to be talking about today. Today we're going to be talking about the book of Jonah. And I love this book because God shows us how Christians need to remember God and how we need to trust and have faith and remember God and remember that He has so much mercy and so much grace. And if it wasn't for Him, we endureth not. And I know it sometimes might be hard being a Christian. I know sometimes you might go through times where you feel like you want to quit. You want to give up. And I understand that we live in a broken world. We have broken generations. We have so much evil stuff going around. We have broken people. And all we need to do as Christians is we need to go out there and show the world what God is doing in our life. And I'm telling you what, Satan will attack and he will do the best possible thing he can. To make sure you don't share the gospel of Jesus Christ. And you don't walk by faith. You don't trust in our Lord, our Savior. You don't trust that God is holy. And today, we're going to be in Jonah. So I ask that we all go to Jonah. And I ask that we all go to chapter 2 of Jonah. And today, it's Jonah's prayer. Now here you go. God is giving us a prayer about Jonah. God is sitting. God is is sitting here telling him look you gotta have trust in me I know it seems like I'm not here and there's many times we as Christians is that we will look upon God and say God where are you at you have forsaken me God you're not helping me 
I'm telling you what God will test. God will test your, his children. He will test his children all the time, just like he tested Job. Don't let anyone tell you that he won't, because he will test you as a child. He looks up to you. He is a father. And I'm telling you what my father I have in my house right now, he's tested me. And God will do the same thing. Don't let anyone tell you. Don't let anyone tell you that God isn't a challenging God. Because he is. He has given us the greatest, the greatest power. But he also has given us greatest responsibility. So here you go. Chapter 2. Now here you go, Jonah. He's in this big fish. He's struggling. He's in the midst of trouble and he feels like he wants to quit. And I think we as Christians, that would, that's what brings us down the most. As we go through worldly pleasure, we go through all the hard work we do through work or school or sports or some type of thing, or maybe you're dealing with a relationship, or maybe you're dealing with hatred or anger or maybe wicked thoughts. We all struggle with these things. And we as Christians, instead of looking up to God and trusting in Him for prayer, we quit. And we completely forget about Him. But today, we're changing that. Today, we're getting rid of that unfaithfulness. So here you go in, verse two, in chapter 2 of verse 1. And it says, Then Jonah prayed unto the Lord, his God, out of the fish's belly, and said, I cried by reason of mine affliction unto the Lord. And he heard me out of the belly of hell cry. And I, though, heardest my voice, for thou hadst cast me into the deep in the midst of the seas, and the floods compassed me about. All thy billows and all thy waves passed over. And I said, I am cast out of thy sight, yet I will look again toward the holy temple. The waters compassed me about even to the soul. The depth closed me round about. The weeds were wrapped about in my head. I went down to the bottoms of the mountains, and the earth were, uh, with her bars was about me forever. And yet has thou brought up my life from cor corruption, and O oh Lord my God. When, I, when my soul fainteth within me, I remember the Lord, and my prayer came unto thee, into thy holy temple. They that deserve lying vanities forsake their own mercy. But I will sacrifice unto thee with the voice of thanksgiving. I will pay that day I have vowed. Salvation is of the Lord, and the Lord spake unto the fish, and it vomited out of Jonah upon the dry land. Now you see here, this fish is absolutely destroying Jonah. Jonah is dying, basically. And this is how it feels as Christians. We see the enemy. We see people attacking us and persecuting us, just like they did to Jesus. They, <coughs> we're so far down in hatred by these people that it seems that we are swallowed up, and it seems like we don't even exist anymore, that we have died. And this is how it's going to be as Christians. This is how it's going to work. The enemy is going to do the best thing he can to make you break. The enemy is going to do the best he thing he can to make you quit on God, to stop trusting in the Lord. And I'm telling you, the enemy doesn't care if your soul lives. He wants your soul to be in hell. The enemy is scared that your trust in God will live forever. And that's what we want, people. We want the enemy to fail. We want Satan to have some crying, some tears. We want to make Satan mad. Because every day when we spread the gospel of Jesus Christ, every day when we spread about the Holy Spirit and about the, the resurrection, he gets mad. And this is the reason why I brought up spreading the gospel is more important than reading the Bible eight hours a day. Because it has to do with this. God wants us to sit in our rooms and complain and say, God, life is too hard. It's too hard to go out there and deal with our enemies. It's too hard to spread the gospel. That is what the enemy wants us to think of. And today we're going to change that. I'm telling you people, faith is what brings us to a true relationship with Christ. 
Look at these verses again. Look at verse 5. And it says, The waters compassed me about, even to the soul. The death closed me round about. The weeds were wrapped about my head. I went down to the bottoms of the mountains. The earth with her bars was about me forever. Yet hast thou brought up my life from corruption. O oh, Lord my God. Now I want to stop here quick. If you read this verse 5, it says that it gets close to your soul. Now what is God talking about here? He is talking about that Satan will attack in so much ways that your soul will start to be hurt. That your soul will feel hardened. It will feel like a rock is pushing on it and it can't breathe. And we as Christians, we always feel like that. But there's something awesome about God. There's something awesome about our Lord and Savior. Is that right here we have the soul. Pretend I have it in my hand. And you got Satan, right, who's just pushing on it like a rock. He's pushing on the soul. But if you have faith and trust in God, nothing can destroy it. So I'm telling you what. Your soul might be hardened tonight. I don't know if you're doing sex or drugs or alcohol or doing some type of evil. I do not know what's in the background. I don't even know what you're looking at. But I tell you what, we got to get rid of it because we cannot let Satan destroy our soul to let that rock push down on it and destroy it, squeeze it, to make it burst. We don't want our soul to burst. I'm telling you that that rock is never going to go away. When you come to Christ, Satan, Satan is never going to go away. I'm sorry. He's, he's going to be there. But if you start to trust in God and have faith in God, then Satan no longer is a problem. You know what I mean? Look, when you constantly whine and complain, you're giving the enemy what he wants. He wants you to be sad. But when you ignore the enemy and you trust in our Savior, God Almighty, and have faith in him, you no longer look upon the enemy and complain. Now you're going to make the enemy mad because he's not getting what he wants. And this is what Jonah is doing. Even though it's the rock is there and it's touching his soul. And we see in verse 5, it says at the end, the weeds were wrapped about my head. That the weeds are wrapping around him. Sin is wrapping around him. The hard moments are wrapping around him. Even though it's in the hard moment, he doesn't care. He believes in God. And this is what makes true Christians. This is what makes true Christians that will go unto the end and they don't care what the enemy says. The ones that are faithful, the ones that trust in God, the ones that are willing to spread the gospel, even when it's hard, the ones that are willing to go to death for Jesus Christ. And I'm telling you here at my knees, I will die for Christ. I will never quit. Because what he's done for me and the mercy he had upon my soul when I didn't believe, he deserves it all. And it's sad that most people are letting, letting Satan take the rock and push and burst their soul. Their soul is being destroyed. Their soul is heading to eternal death right now. And if people don't start changing, this will happen. And this is not a joke. Hell is very real. And Satan wants you to be there. But I'm telling you what, there's a way out. And his name is Jesus Christ. And I ask any of you here that are listening today, if you are struggling with some relationship, if you never accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and you believe that he had died on the cross for your sins, I ask that you change tonight. Because I'm telling you what, the things that you do on this world are going to die. They will no longer be here. What did God say in Mark chapter 8, verse 36? What profit if a man, if he shall gain the whole world, but lose his own soul? And this is what Satan wants. This is what Satan wants. He wants you to gain the whole world while, destroy, while he's destroying your soul. And then when you die, it's over with. You gained nothing from the world and lost your soul. So what's the point, people? Is it having eternal life 
and having a good relationship with Christ and having faith in Him and trust in Him even through hard times? Or is it falling down the path of the world and Satan's path and losing your soul for eternity? It's up to you. And this is the reason why I like the book of Jonah. Because Jonah didn't quit. He was in the fish. He was hurt. It was hard. Persecution. Struggling. But when he trusted in God, God got him out of the fish. And this is how we need to do it. It might take 50 years for you to trust, or 75. I'm only 17 years old. And I don't care if I live to 100, I'll still trust in God. I don't care if it takes that long. You know why? Because look how long God waited from His creation. Thousands and thousands of years. He waited until my birth so my soul can be saved. He waited. I'm telling you what, people. Jesus Christ has done so much for me. And I'm not going to let the enemy destroy my soul. I'm not going to let the enemy make me sad because I'm going to go out there and fight for the truth. And I hope y'all are with me that are listening. I hope y'all are willing to agree with me. I hope y'all understand and you trust in God. I ask that we all go into prayer because if it wasn't for Jesus, if it wasn't for the story of Jonah, if it wasn't for God, we wouldn't be here. I ask that we all go into prayer right now. Lord Jesus, there's a lot of things going on in this world. A lot of pain, a lot of suffering, a lot of sadness. And Lord, it seems like it's getting worse and worse every day. It seems like it's getting closer to the end times, closer to your return. Lord, it makes me sad to see so many souls heading to eternal death. I pray, Lord, we take the story of Jonah. That even though we believe in you, help us to never quit. Help us to be the true believer where we will endure unto the end, even if it's hard. Lord, we see here that Jonah, he did all this. He fought. And even though it was hard, he trusted in you. And look what he got out of. He trusted in you and he got out of the fish. And that's how it's going to work as Christians, Lord. You promised us that we will have eternal life. You promised us. But Lord, we know we need to have patience. Lord, help us to have patience. Help us to fight. Because one day we'll be in eternal heaven with no sinner, no Satan, or no tempter. Lord, it's coming a day, but we need not to quit. Lord, help us. You're the only one that can keep us from falling unto being unfaithful. Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord, when we're unfaithful. And I say, Lord, if there's any hearts today who haven't accepted you, who are not faithful and you are struggling and they quit when hard times come, Lord, I ask that you work in their hearts. I pray for each individual. I pray for their families. I pray for school. I pray for work, whatever's going on in their life. I pray, Lord, that they get in your word. I pray they start spreading the gospel. You give them the Holy Ghost. I pray they walk by faith and believe that you died and you rose the third day for for our wicked sins. I hope they believe that. <laughs> and I ask this in your Son in Jesus' name, I pray in the Holy Ghost and the Father. Guide us to victory, even though it's hard to be a Christian. Amen. I hope you all understand everything I read today. If you ever need to go back, it's Jonah chapter 2, all the way. To the end. Jonah kept fighting throughout these verses. He kept fighting. In verse 10 it says, And the Lord spake unto the fish, and it vomited out Jonah upon the dry land. This tells you right here ultimately what it takes to be a Christian. You have to keep fighting. You have to keep fighting. But unto the end, 
you will be spit out to eternal life in heaven in the kingdom of God. So let's go out there and spread the gospel even if it's hard. Because if we endure until the end, we shall be saved. And the Lord promises that. No one will take that from us. So let's go out there and be true, faithful servants. Let's, let's go out there and preach the truth of His Word and to be His child. Let's do this. And let's go out there and win souls for Christ. Even though it's hard, let's all be like Jonah. For he never quit, and he was promised to be saved. God bless you all. Have a wonderful night. Be safe. The Lord will protect you, and he will never forsake you.